probably from the uh, public health point of view, the key is secondary prevention of uh, periodontitis. Uh, but from the patient personal point of view, things like traumatic toothbrushing, uh, halitosis, or uh, dentinal hypersensitivity uh, are very important issues that affect their daily life. So providing uh, uh, good advices, uh, providing uh, important evidence on efficacy of a specific uh, agents, I think is important, not only for the dental community, but also for the public community. And uh, of course, uh, the main message that we provide uh, to to the public and to the dentists is that uh, periodontitis uh, is a chronic disease that of course is, is triggered by bacteria but is, is really modulated by the host and therefore we need to understand what is the risk of the specific host uh, in order to be efficient in prevention. We need to uh, study the host and uh, provide uh, customized uh, measures. If we understand that both uh, caries and periodontal diseases are, are, are the most important diseases of human mankind uh, in terms of uh, frequency and prevalence, uh, also if we understand that these diseases can be prevented very easily, and also if we understand that once these diseases, mainly periodontitis, uh, develop and, and become severe, it, it really poses a risk uh, for the health of the patient. So uh, all this development from health to gingivitis to periodontitis, uh, there are different measures that we can implement for primary prevention, for secondary prevention of gingivitis, and for secondary prevention of periodontitis. Uh, and I think uh, these measures have proven very efficacious. Uh, they are not very complex, they are not cumbersome, uh, but uh, of course there is a need uh, of the own patient, own subject intervention. There is a need of motivation, there is a need of the patient to have the desire to implement some behavioral changes in order to be efficacious in prevention. And. Uh, it is scope that goes beyond the patient-dentist relationship. Uh, and this is why workshops like this may have a very big impact, not in how we deal with our patients, but in how health and disease can be modulated uh, at the population base. I think the patient perspective is key and uh, if we are able to educate the patient that the maintenance of a healthy dentition is key for their health and well-being and in the same manner that the patient nowadays understands how important it is to, to have a proper nutrition, to do exercise, to take care of the environment, to have a clean sort of life. Uh, we need to implement uh, oral prevention uh, in all these messages because everything is interlinked. Everything is the same network of events that probably will make, hopefully, us to live longer, but not only to live longer, but to live healthier. Uh, and uh, these are the key messages that we would like to say. This is not different from clean environment, good nutrition, healthy life, make exercise, and of course, uh, do effective oral hygiene. In our group, we dealt with, with different aspects of prevention, but perhaps the key aspect we dealt was secondary prevention. And of course, uh, secondary prevention means uh, all the preventive measures that we have to implement and also the patient needs to implement after being treated of periodontitis. So that means 
patients who have suffered periodontitis, now after the periodontal therapy they are in health and we need to maintain health for life. So we uh, dealt with the different strategies, both on a personal level from the patient side, but most important from the professional intervention. What are the specific protocols? What, are, what is the timing of, what is the interval of the recall? How do we base uh, on the risk of the patient to provide the different intervals for the specific interventions? And what is the impact of these interventions on the patient stability from periodontal health throughout life? Uh, this is very important because this has uh, public implications. We cannot provide the same protocol for every patient. We need to customize the prevention measures for each specific patient and we need to understand what is the patient risk profile in order to provide these uh, instructions. Besides uh, secondary prevention, we also discussed uh, what is the role of traumatic brushing are there any secondary effects of uh, dental hygiene measurements? How can we approach halitosis? How do we approach uh, dentinal hypersensitivity? Uh, these are important issues that uh, may occur throughout the life of a subject and we need to provide uh, specific answers for the specific problems. The problem of traumatic truth brushing, of course, deals with uh, removal of tooth structure and also sometimes removal of uh, the gingival margin. Uh, so the development of uh, gingival recessions, cervical lesions, uh, abrasions of the tooth structure, uh, those things, uh, it is not very clear in the literature what is the role of the uh, toothbrushing. Is it better to do mechanical brushing with an, el an electrical toothbrush, with a mechanical toothbrush? What are the implications? Of course, the systematic review did not provide very clear answers, but, but, uh, but there are indications that uh, both mechanical toothbrushes and electrical toothbrushes can be safe uh, for the patient throughout life. We need to provide specific instructions with, with uh, patients who have a specific uh, risk for developing these lesions. And also we discuss what is the efficacy of our interventions to treat halitosis. And, and this is important because it is clear from the literature that most of the halitosis has uh, intraoral origin. So it is us, the dentist, who would, should provide the specific uh, measures uh, and, uh, and therefore we uh, evaluated what are the uh, chemical agents who are efficient in the treatment of uh, halitosis, also what is the impact of uh, mechanical brushing uh, of the tongue coating for example and finally the, the other aspect we uh, studied in depth uh, is how important it is, uh, dentinal hypersensitivity for many patients, how is it developed, and what are the different measures that we can implement to alleviate this problem that affects the well-being of many people. So we discussed in the systematic review what are the chemical agents that have uh, demonstrated uh, efficacy, both agents that the patient uses him or herself at home, patient delivered agents, and also agents that we as dentists uh, may deliver in those uh, circumstances where the dentinal hypersensitivity uh, is related with tooth lesions or with very uh, acute uh, uh, episodes. I think the objectives behind this project go fully beyond the specific marketing interests of the specific companies. And these companies, uh, Procter & Gamble and Johnson & Johnson, they have 
demonstrated uh, that uh, prevention is important for them for the sake of prevention, independently, of course, from uh, their own business point of view. And uh, they have trusted the EFP and the ability of the EFP workshops uh, to have uh, an impact uh, in the profession, in the public, and by joining forces, I think uh, this effort will be very fruitful.